G'day guys, it's Bren Carter here and we're back again. We're talking about something a little bit controversial. We're talking about closures and why there's so much heat in the debate between corks and screw caps. Closures in wine and the difference between corks and screw caps differing qualities of each and newer technologies as well but I thought I'd actually later rest just a couple of things we're gonna have a have a quick gander at three separate little closures here and I think we might do another video later on down the track about uh, a few of the the more innovative ones that have come out there's there's whole ranges outside of cork screw cap now there's bagasse based uh, corks which is actually a, a based around a sugar production byproducts. There's also some really interesting plastic based corks. Here just keeping things uh, very, very, very simple. Um, this here <laughs> um, is a screw cap. Uh, that's that's pretty much exactly what it looks like. I've pulled this off just a, a, another bottle of wine just literally right over here. Um, it's an aluminium based closure with a what they call a, a poly liner at the bottom here, so a little plastic based liner. Australia and New Zealand uh, predominantly will be utilizing uh, screw caps. And that's because historically we've had a bit of a tumultuous history with corks, especially during the rapid growth of our industry during the um, the 80s and 90s and into like the early noughties, uh, where we were starting to, to sell to a lot more different uh, export markets around the world and there was an immense interest and fascination over Australian wine at the time and to keep up with production we needed to get a lot of these things into the country uh, now it got to a point where and perhaps it's it's uh, political or for whatever reason we were being sent corks of dubious quality and these corks were coming out with um, a lot of TCA taint or trichloroanisole and that is that that typical cork musty smell that a, a corked or tainted wine will typically have and we're getting very high rates there there are old, I'd say, pundits in the industry that um, do remember the days uh, where you would buy a case of wine and indeed almost 25%, if not more, more uh, would be affected by this uh, particularly strong and unsavoury taint. Uh, and that really drove us to, to push hard and, uh, and adopt uh, this style of closure. But now the cork industry is starting to, to, to really listen and learn from uh, the predominance of, of something like screw caps. Screw caps offer so many, you know, there's a, a, so many pros of these. Obviously, you don't need a cork screw anymore. Uh, they're, they're obviously an aluminium based product that's very easy to bottle very, very quickly. But there are some drawbacks. Obvious drawbacks are it's made from, hopefully, it would be a recycled material and it is recyclable. The only issue with recycling is the little poly that um, little poly liner in the middle there, that you can see that little reflective liner, that's actually uh, what prevents or controls the oxygen ingress and egress rate uh, into that bottle of wine. So many of you would know, wine and oxygen aren't exactly the best friends, but wine indeed needs a fair amount of oxygen to actually evolve and develop, just not too much. We call it the Goldilocks zone. That there ensures that uh, your wine is going to stay firmly well uh, within that particular zone. Corks, however, we've got one here for you, so you can have a, have a bit of a look here. So this is uh, what they call a natural cork. So it's a 100% single piece cork. Uh, and you can see from the little sort of divots around here, little shadow marks, uh, it in particular is um, uh, been completely, basically hole punched out of the actual bark from the cork tree. Uh, now I've just pulled this one out and you can see sort of, there's a there's a myriad of actually issues with utilizing natural cork. And you can sort of see this sort of shadowy bit right here. That's actually uh, where wine is starting to, to leak through because one of the biggest drawbacks with this particular product and its naturalness uh, is its inconsistency. When we talk about ring barking a tree, that's, that's a, a way to basically kill a tree. But not the cork tree. When you ring bark it, it doesn't actually die. It develops this very, very, very thick, what they call a cork cambium layer. Now the cork cambium layer uh, is obviously where this derives its little name from. I'll ring bark it and then I'll come along and pick it up and take it into uh, essentially the processing plant where lots of hole punches will punch out uh, all of these corks. But that means that each and every single one of them uh, is uh, is completely distinct and completely different. It can be a bit of a roller coaster ride sometimes when you actually open up a, a bottle of wine that's sealed with one of these babies. In this particular instance, this is actually a, a very clean uh, cork. I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's of the highest grade quality. There are a fair few inconsistencies here. Now that shadowy part there is actually uh, the wine starting to leak through one of these inconsistencies. Some of you may have been taught by, by uh, your parents uh, to always store wine bottles on their side and that's to actually keep the cork nice and moist and that will actually allow it to bloat and seal the actual top of the bottle. That's where screw caps really come into their own. You, you could suddenly uh, start to leave your bottles upright. You didn't need to put 
put them on, on their side. They lasted a lot longer. They were a guarantee that you wouldn't get any of the cork taints. And it wasn't a bit of a, a game of Russian roulette. Enter a new player into the field, this little fella. Um, so this here, let's see if I can get it in focus here for you guys. Um, obviously this is one of ours, hence the, the giant logo. Um, now you can see that there's a fair degree of consistency. In fact, it's a really interesting uh, texture. So this is also a natural cork-based product. So um, what they do is they, when they hole punch these out, it's actually quite an inefficient process. It leaves a lot of wastage, whereas um, this particular company developed this called the D-Arm type cork. And there's a few others as well that are becoming available. Other cork companies are, are starting to, to compete with, with D-Arm here. We've actually fallen in love with these guys. So essentially what they do is they grab the natural cork and they pulverize it, blow it to little bits, and they extract something called subarin in that process. They treat the cork granules uh, with supercritical CO2. is actually just carbon dioxide moving from a liquid phase to a gas phase, essentially boiling or bubbling out a lot of the, the taints uh, associated with cork. Then they put them into molds, they put the subarin back in, which uh, binds all the cork granules together. This allows us to be able to make uh, corks of varying densities and allowing winemakers to have an intellectual choice as to how much oxygen uh, we allow into our wines. Because some wines you want more rapid aging, some wines you want less uh, less rapid aging. Because of the, the nature of, of how these are actually made, you can also leave these upright. So it gives us a lot more choices than something like this, but um, uh, purely from a sustainability perspective, and this is where we stand on, on this particular process, you can't grow one of these things. And that fascinates me, because where we have something like this, now keep in mind, it answers a lot of the pros that we actually get with utilizing a screw cap, without the fact that we have to either use a mined material uh, or, a, or a recycled material. Keep in mind that for a sustainability perspective, reduce, reuse, recycle. In fact, there should be technically four things, which is remove, reduce, reuse, recycle, and in that order. By all means, I'm more than happy for people to use uh, recycled aluminium. I just think um, perhaps we should be utilizing recycled aluminium for a purpose where we don't have a natural alternative. But we're seeing the realms of wine start to innovate and play around with a whole bunch of new things. So I thought this would just sort of highlight exactly why we would utilize these things. And in particular in Australia, the adoption of screw caps and actually the wider adoption of de-arm corks now uh, as we start to, to gravitate towards more sustainable processes um, and relegate the, the realms of, of screw cap uh, towards you know, other, other uses that we don't have a means to grow a natural alternative for. Enjoy.